You're listening to the MS Power User Podcast. It's the podcast for the Microsoft enthusiast and power user. We discuss the latest news from MSPowerUser.com, which is all about Microsoft Windows, Holographic, Surface Studio, uh, Lenovo, and large things that happen in large cities in Nevada. My name is Vernon E.L. Smith, and I'm joined, as usual, by Andy Bennett. Hi, Andy. What's up, buddy? Hey. Oh, man. There, there's just so much going on, specifically with the news this week. It, it has been... I mean, it's the first week of the year, and stuff is just picked up exponentially since the past couple of two have been just about nothing. But uh, well, wow, C- it is. CES CES has part to do part um can take some of the blame for that. And oh, yeah. traditionally, there's, there's... Okay. traditionally, it hasn't been as huge. CES seems to be kind of a little bit less Microsofty stuff, you know, hardware obviously. But this year, it's kind of interesting to see. How <laughs> how my hardware OEMs are actually picking up on what Microsoft is trying to entice them to do since before Windows 10, basically since Windows 8, and uh, that's encouraging. Well, that's pretty cool, and just and there's a lot of it that uh, isn't related to CES, which uh, well we're we're gonna talk about a bunch yeah, of that on plenty. the show today. There are plenty of fun stuff. And it's a case where. It might not be the highest amount of stories covered, but it's the content within them. I am excited to cover, uh, well, a lot of this stuff. And we'll hit up on CES just a little bit at the end of the show, too, just slightly, maybe. How was your week, Andy? I mean, your week. Well, it's, uh, I've I've had better starts to the year, but I guess I've had worse, too. It's just been a bit of a mess, really. Uh, I, I almost lost a hard drive containing... So much stuff that is just irreplaceable, so uh, I'm now (laughs) backing things up and uh, preparing for the worst, although I don't think I will have to, because I managed to get it fixed, at least, so... To the cloud, Andy, to the cloud. Well, well, some things, with my upload speed, it takes about, boy, three to four hours to upload some stuff. Well, would it be worth it? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. So, uh, how was yours? <laughs> uh, my week has been all right. My day has been ridiculous since about 7.30 this morning until, oh, I guess about 7.30 tonight. I've been working on replacing or putting in a new floor in our living room slash dining room or the the great room. And I'm about half done. And I have never, <laughs> I'm my, I'm learning a lot awful quickly because I have never done this before, and it is exciting and ridiculous and um, it's fun and very very uh, stressful, and all of that. But I'm I'm glad of, of the progress I've made so far. My wife is even more glad of the progress I've made so far, and things are, things are okay. Things are busy here, but they're they're fine. Well, that's pretty good. And so uh, I guess it's uh, time to get things started, I suppose, right? Yeah. All righty. Well, starting us off will easily be the biggest news uh, news thing of the week, I think, maybe unless some other CES stuff pops up. But Project Neon, we have some new stuff on that, which is an exclusive to MS Power User. And we are, Andy, <laughs> tell me about this. I'm excited All to right, hear more so... about this. First off, to just kind of go over what we have, we have a couple of screenshots, some information, and just uh, little bits about what's going to happen with Project Neon. And there, it's just, it is a lot to take in at first. And I have uh, known some of this stuff for a while. Some of it's been hunches. Some of it's been hearing whispers here and there. But oh man, oh man. Now, what we previously knew about Neon was that it was a new update to MDL two. And that it would be a very, very big visual upgrade. We heard about improved animations and stuff like that. And all of it is true, thankfully. And uh, It's this... true so far. It well, feels, yeah. It's current at, at this point, but this is still almost a, well, almost a year away, maybe. We'll see. Well, we'll Less see the we'll we will see the first official unveiling at build this year if all things go according to plan. Th- which 
things involving neon uh i if i recall correctly this th some of the stuff involved for neon has been delayed already so it very well may not keep going according to the plan but because keep in mind all the stuff we have right now are mock-ups but with the stuff that is progressing with what we can see, like, for example, I've mentioned previously about Groove Music being basically a testbed for stuff that they could do in public builds. And, and in fact, the, even the Photos app, it is so, so, so close to what is planned for Neon. The only difference is that it does not even have... The only difference between the current Photos app design and the design you'll see when Neon comes around is that it's missing special effects. And that is basically it, as far as I know. So it's of like course, a low-budget movie instead of one having CGI. It's, it's like Wait, a... maybe that's a wrong analogy. <laughs> it's, it's like a, if you had the basic theme for Windows 7 enabled, that is the current state of some apps on Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Because Project Neon introduces two two different new ideas. And the one we know or rather, these are terms used by Microsoft, and the one that we know about right now is called acrylic. And acrylic is, if you remember when uh, they said that Windows 7 was glass, and then that Windows 8 was, uh, uh, what did they call that? It was uh, something something digital, Unashamed, unashamedly digital, something like that. Well, acrylic is, this design language's take on that. And it I is... I think that maybe... This this very minor theme of bokeh. I mean, if I'm saying that right, like this, this, uh, this unfocused thing, too. Which I don't really. I mean, blur is a little bit necessarily not necessarily the same thing as out of focus, but very very similar. And uh, I think we're just seeing that in a lot of places. And it's weird to to understand. Weird to know if this is setting the pace for it. If it's following a trend. If it's kind of, uh, you know, it's. Um, well, I'd I'd going say to that, where the puck is going to be, you know, kind of thing. I'd say that if we're going to go around comparing what we've seen in the user interface to any other company, I mean, the first obvious thing is Apple. But the thing is, the funny thing to me is that Apple is it's not it's not like they own Blur or anything, but it's at a point where they have been the only one using it for so long that it is now is now seems like it's their thing, but. Definitely not. Although I cannot deny that some of the implementation with acrylic is pretty similar looking to some of Apple's stuff, but I am certain we are going to see more and more differentiation if th as things goes on. Go on. But uh, well, yeah, acrylic. Me, it is okay. Well, I was just going to say Microsoft is calling these things. Um, well, they have two things that they're calling this: conscious UI, and of course the connected animations. And yeah, those those are a couple more uh, things, but they are all really second to the to the acrylic part, which yeah. is just gigantic, and it's the and it's it's I'd say it's the cornerstone of it, because for so long people have said we want Aero Glass back, well Aero Glass not quite coming back. People people still want that though. They want the visu they want high visual fidelity, which I won't say that Aero has aged amazingly well. Like the specifically the design of it within Windows Seven and Windows Vista, I, as much as I like it, I cannot say that it is aged well enough that it you can't go back to a near identical replication. But this this is this is a very very modern version of it, and it looks superb. And yeah, the, the cornerstone of it all is the acrylic elements, which are the blurred ones, and they are. Just this translucenty area that's usually going to be on a sidebar, although you can just put them anywhere you want in the app, and they will take you know, take on the colors of whatever's behind it, which sounds pretty familiar. And uh, just oh man, there there is a there is a lot here, and uh, as we can see in some of these screenshots, if you open up the article, one of them is of a mail app, which I think sums up the design of a lot of things well, with the exception of like a lot of these mockups. They have insanely, insanely big margins on them. And uh, that is not going to be in the final as far as I can tell. I mean, it kind of goes without saying that this is a mock-up, so a lot of it is just going to be whatever. 
but I can assure you there is no way Microsoft would release something with a window that is just so improperly aligned. These these are all just mock-ups. Some of these are very quick mock-ups, and it, it's it's not it is not representative of a final product. It is representative of an idea, and they're going to take that idea. They're going to send that to the team and say, "All right, do this, this, and we can take a look at this, this, and this." Of course, you know, do, make, do it in a way that works. And I mean, obviously, not exactly the exact same conversation, but. The, just to be clear with everybody, because I see so many complaints about these margins, these margins are not going to be in the final thing, although there are going to be fatter areas. And I uh, kind of mentioned the Photos app a little while ago. If you if you take a look at the Photos app design right now, you will notice that there is about a 30 pixel, and this is if you go and say, and react, it's, it doesn't exactly show because the whole the whole top area is one color, which will eventually become acrylic. Say thirty top top thirty pixels are the title bar. Now for thirty pixels below that, w there is just this big empty space between the bottom bar. Uh, well, not exactly bottom bar, but uh, the rest of the header rather. And that is, as far as I can tell, taken from some of these mockups. The rest, and that is, and that is the only big margin thing that I would expect to see there. None none of the rest of this stuff. It's just. It's too off the wall. But uh, getting back to the main content of it, Neon, Neon is going to add a lot of stuff. Acrylic is just one of them, and Ver like Vernon mentioned, there's conscious UI and connected animations. And yeah, it's, it's, and in one of the internal concept videos, what happens with conscious UI is that the side navigation acrylic will change depending on what's behind the current app, and the picture of the artist also has a neat little effect where it moves around a bit if the user moves the window. And it's all about little touches, which is a really, really cool thing. I would, say, first... that, I would say that that really is, is a lot like many good responsive design, you know, web designs at this point, even just... Um, MS Power User, the web, the, the site itself has animations like that, or I would should say, uh, what is, uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's things like that, which we see in a few different um, areas, not just the, the website, but yeah. uh, what is the other, what, what I will say is, animations, yeah. Yeah, what I will say though, is that with the picture of uh, the, the purely black and white groove music design, like for example, there's another groove mock up. That is the featured image for the post, but for that uh, design where it, that one is particularly interesting to me because when I look at that, I don't exactly think this is an app. First off, my the first thing I think of when I see that is that it all it really does remind me of what is considered to be a lot of modern web design, where you'll see this black and white design become very prevalent, and. There's there's just so much you can take from some of these. And again, these are all mock-ups. Not everything's going to be be exactly as it is, but one of the things you'll see in this groove mock-up is that there's a thing called mixtapes, which that that sounds that's that in itself sounds interesting, and I think there's a couple references to it in other mock-ups as well. I'm trying to find it in the top mock-up, but I'm not seeing it here. Okay, anyways though, I'll, I'll add to this um, another another example we showed in here was the Outlook Outlook Mail and Calendar app, in which some aspects of it along the left side, you know, your your sidebar would be blurred when you're not using them, uh, or you know can can change. And the first thing I think of being old is I think of Windows Media Center. And that's not necessarily the same thing, but that's that's how my mind works, I guess. That's well, the next me thing. Me Media Center is essentially the cornerstone of all modern Microsoft design. You had Media Center, then you had Zoom, then you had Windows 8, then you, then of course, you know, move on to Windows 10, which for all the stuff it's scrapped, there is, of course, still that little snippet of Microsoft design within there. Mm -hmm. But Media Center really did have the blur in and out, depending on what you're using, where which, of course, was similar to Windows 7. In some cases, or Vista too, but 
uh, Zune soon after had very little of the blur aspects of it. it really was moving forward with Metro, but then except for I think it was the um, the, the 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 artist featured image basically uh, would would blur in and out depending on what was uh, playing, which is really awesome. And well, whatever. I'm not going to dwell on that. Yeah, and and that speaking of that mock-up, that one. It you, it shows off a hover state that is apparently going to be a huge thing throughout Neon Design, where whatever you're ho- hovering over, instead of just having a simple background highlight, it's going to be a very fancy effect where it's like you're shining a light on whatever it is, and it'll have uh, these gradient lines at the top of bottom to, bottom of it to separate it, and it looks superb. And it's uh, if if I remember correctly what I've heard, it's that is actually its very own thing that developers will be able to play around with. That would be very cool. But of course, oh, yeah. it works fantastic with a mouse and could work very awesome with HoloLens or other holographic, Windows holographic devices, but really doesn't do jack crap for someone using touch unless there's something else I'm missing because this is going to well, be... I, well, keep in mind, it is yeah. a hover state and... If you're, I mean, hover in a traditional sense is not exactly something you will get with a with a touch input, but you can, of course, push down on something, and you'll see an effect when that happens. And all of this is really also taking into account a lot of Windows holographic. This, they are aiming for a consistent design language that will look great on everything. And with Windows holographic, I, I have not... Of course, I've not tried out a HoloLens, but I would assume that it also is a good reason to bring bl- some of the glass looks back into play. Because, sure, you can have a solid window floating around with augmented vision, and that that in itself is spectacular. But what if it was a very, very nice looking one and had all of these fancy graphical effects that interacted with the world around you? And that's an, that adds another layer to it. And then there's also... Some of this does remind me of some of the little bits of HoloLens design we've seen in a couple of things. So for whatever, whatever that's worth, just man, there, there's just so much. And it, it's really worth checking out this the the article Mahidi put up because it's, yeah. it goes into great depth and shows some good screenshots and a couple um, animations. So it's certainly. Uh, yeah, yeah if, this if, isn't just a plug. Yeah, I mean, like, go check out like, the yeah for, the for real. I mean, this, this is I mean, for especially when we're talking about mockups, you're going to want to uh, take a look at those mockups, make your own judgment. And it is worth noting that some of the other mockups that uh, I have managed to hear about, particularly on Twitter, you know, you'll see a little conversation here and there. There is there is talk of a variant of the one in the featured image, except with a light taskbar. So it very well could mean that they are working to get full light theme support into win- desktop Windows 10, which that should be nice. Uh, full light theme? I mean, we, yeah, we, like... Well, we were looking forward to dark theme available and everything. Well, the thing is, you know, you can't make the taskbar white with dark text. Yeah. And, of course, you know, also inversely with dark theme, you can't make the title bar black, mm. which that's really, really weird. Neon's going to Neon's focusing heavily on animations, simplicity, and consistency. All those three things together. And so we're going to see things like bits where it was like half light theme, half dark theme on the shell. That stuff is going to be all ironed out. As for simplicity, I mean just just look at these mockups, people. <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that this stuff isn't hard to figure out. There seems to be much less of a focus on the hamburger menu. In fact, yes. yeah, yeah, the, the the hamburger menu. Honestly, I doubt that most people are going to be pushing it with these designs. No, I don't think so. But yeah. there will need to be some indicator of a. There's more here, which of course the ellipses has well, done. What I the what I mean is has done what fine I, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. What I mean is. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be collapsing it with a lot of these designs because it just these designs do not exactly look like they're built for the menu to collapse, but we'll see how it plays out in production. Well, uh, what we're seeing in mockups are desktop. I mean, we're looking at a widescreen of 16 by 9 or, or 2 True. by 3 or something. 
And 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 that's what I'm talking about as well. Of course, on mobile, you're going to be pushing them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really do want to see what this is going to look like on mobile because this is going to be a significant change to the design of the desktop operating system. So not exactly sure what's going to happen with mobile there because sure, there's all these acrylic ideas and there's glass and blur, but... It, well, for a lot of it, it's going to be blending with your the applications behind your app, open application and your desktop, and desktop background, that is. Not really going to see much of that on mobile. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you do see some blur on mobile, like if you open up Groove Music right now and you uh, take a look at that uh, bottom play, bottom seek bar, that's blurred. And I think that's kind of going to be the extent of it on mobile, really. Like, you'll see some elements in apps blurred, but it's not going to be as heavy or prevalent as it is on desktop, I don't think. I mean, iOS managed to pull that off pretty good, but I I don't, I, I just don't know. Especially since there's no information on it, even for, with some of the stuff I've managed here, there's basically diddly squat discovered there. However... Okay. Also worth noting, though, that while I don't know about mobile, the Xbox is, of course, going to get some of this as well. Because the Xbox, as we all know, is going to support virtual reality when Project Scorpio rolls around. And in turn, that, of course, means Windows Holographic. That's another thing being tied together here. So then we, so with Neon, we have a user interface that's going to be used on desktop, mobile, and HoloLens, which in, which in turn is Windows Holographic slash, uh, uh, do they have a term for uh, regular virtual reality? Is it just Windows virtual reality? Well, no, I mean, the operating system is Windows Holographic, and obviously the, the device that we're showcasing it with, yeah. show, showcasing it with is HoloLens. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah, no, no, no. There is a uh, dedicated full virtual reality not augmented reality full virtual reality thing that is a uh, built around windows holographics design i guess i guess I it's technically recall, still I don't windows recall if they had a specific name for that just that it was that they were also doing v- vr in addition to mixed yeah, so reality I guess, so i guess it is still technically windows holographic it probably well, yeah it's probably still part of that i would yeah. I think so so i'll just Call it Windows Holographic from here on out for the sake of uh, not being able to know if they have anything else. But so Windows Holographic on Xbox, that's going to be connecting a virtual virtual reality headset to the system and getting in there. So we've got a design that will likely be used on the Xbox dashboard, both on regular TV mode and VR. This is going to be used for the HoloLens. Some of it might even st- be in there already, like... Some of the basic ideas and concepts, I'm sure. And then you've got it, of course, on desktop, mobile. And it's just, it is something that is going to connect all of Microsoft's devices, which, sure, we've said some of this stuff before, and we've gotten close. But the key thing is that we keep getting close, but we never really seem to go all the way with some of this stuff, which Neon is another one of Microsoft's tries to fix that. I have, I have seen... Uh, some people say that they don't, they don't, uh, just to kind of move on to another chunk of this topic right here, because I do think this is something worth addressing. I have seen some people say that they uh, aren't quite sure why uh, Microsoft is focusing their resources on something that is just totally, uh, just totally on the outside as opposed to the internals of Windows. Well, the thing is, a lot of the work being done by this Arguably, most of this is done by teams that are totally on wi- working on the design of Windows. And there's two sides of that. They are, and the biggest side of it is working on the design of the user interface. Not exactly the looks, but working on the design of that user interface is going to be... I'm not going to say it's 90% of what's going to be done, but it is certainly the majority of the work that's going to be done there. And that's going to result in improved usable experience, or, or an improved and easier to use experience on Windows. And that's the way I think it's going to happen. Because designing something is one thing, and it is not an easy thing. Or designing the looks, that is. Designing the looks is one thing, and it is not an easy thing to do, believe me. But it is far, 
far from the whole thing there, and there is just an insane amount of work that gets put into the user interface and making that. And this is a genuine, I believe, push to make that user interface far better than it currently is. And yes, Microsoft keeps focusing on their one more try, but eh, I'll give this one to them because it, they are, they definitely do seem to be trying on this. Because when I look at the designs for Neon, I see something that has a lot of time put into, not just for looks. I see lots of usability improvements here as well. I see far better user interfaces that, yes, they do look better, but they also do look like they're easier and nicer to use, too. And of course, when it comes to working on the various bugs and windows, the majority of the people working on this are not going to be working on bug fixes. The majority of people working on this are going to be working on what their job is, designing things. And it is a legitimate criticism, I, I do believe, to say that they definitely do need to work on some of that and working on making the current builds a bit more stable, but it's not like these things are mutually exclusive. I don't I don't I do not believe that. All right. Well, we need to move forward. <laughs> Obviously, Project Neon, we're expecting to see that come in RS3, which would be at the end of uh, 2017. But before RS3 is RS2, which is called the Creators Update. And at, in October, was it on, in October? I was in New York, and they talked about, that's when they announced the Creators Update. And at that time, they said, coming early 2017. Well, moving forward, we had some tips. I think, I don't remember exactly who broke it, but... It was Mahiti. Okay, but, our, well, I'm talking about something gra previous. Our grand ex okay. I'm talking about something previous to that. As far as the initial version number being 1703, indicating the year 2017 and the third month of 2017 in 03. Well, that ha and so people thought March 2017. Well, that has actually changed. Uh, the new version number is 1704. And now we're expecting it to be uh, April of 2017, of course. And this is, uh, I, I mean, it, we can expect things to get moved back. We don't often, almost ever, see things get done ahead of schedule. But this is exciting to see. I, I cannot wait for this to happen. And, of course, Mahidi uh, broke this. Uh, do you have anything to add to this, Andy? Well, what I, what I will say is that... Uh, Previously, a uh, build was held right around, it was it was near the end of April usually. Yeah. And what I find interesting is that it was pushed back to May 10th to May 12th this year, which, you know, I mean, it's not the biggest jump ever. It's just a couple of weeks. <laughs> Excuse me. But I'd say that it, I do believe some of that ties in. Because at that point they get to say, all right, guys, Redstone 2, the creator's update has been out for a couple of weeks now, and we've introduced the basis for XYZ. Now here's how we're going to improve on that, and how you can start building your apps up using the basis with XYZ for A, B, and C. A, B, and C all likely being things related to Neon. So that that in itself I do find interesting there. Yeah. And of and course, I don't build... Build has traditionally been for developers, although it's kind of merging a little bit more lately to more consumer stuff to some extent, and, and announcements, some devices getting really um, unveiled there sometimes. And so that's, uh, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see how that balance works in there. You know, having this available before Build, and then what else are they going to announce as far as Windows, you know, Windows itself, what type of updates are they going to announce at Build? We'll see. Yeah, and there's just so much that can uh, go on there, because yeah. build this year, I mean, they are going to be putting their hat into the ring with another design language, or rather, they, I mean, they say it is an incremental update to Modern Design Language 2, but uh, there's just so much that is changing there, as, as I've said maybe five or six times, but I... I don't exactly know where the cutoff point is to say it's an increment. I'm, because... I'm a little bit conflicted here because I'm thinking that if they officially announce or sh reveal Neon RS3 at build, which will be a few weeks after they uh, release RS2, that's um, 
maybe su surprising to me. Perhaps I'm seeing a different angle here, but that uh, seems a little bit unreasonable, I suppose. Mm, well, what I see is they are currently putting bases for things into red into redstone too, and that's going to be the bi building blocks for neon. So as a developer, you'd be able to, and this is a bit of speculation here, as a developer, you would be able to take your app, you would be able to start building certain ideas into it, and then as Redstone 3 comes along and chugs along, you can take your app and you can start updating it more and more to just be in line with the neon, neon ideas and principles while still having everything set up on the back end to go as smoothly as possible. Mm, okay, I'll buy. There's been has there's been yeah, maybe. a lot of changes to the uh, Windows design uh, stuff internals lately, mm -hmm. and, and by that I mean what developers are able to access and put in their apps. That is changing with recent builds. Yeah, so and that's by, interesting. By April of seventeen, uh, RS two should be the creators update should be really good because they're basically going to be feature locking this this month January, so. It's all going to be at from then until April is going to be just bug fixes. And that's, um, I mean, <laughs> there yeah, will yeah, still that, be bugs when it gets released, but you know, publicly, but, yeah. uh, it, yeah, it does seem like the creator's update is, I don't want to say it's light on features, but I do think that they are spending more time trying to polish things this time around, which that's good. Well, I think I can, there was a big rush to get windows 10 out and to make it palatable, for everyone that was ta taking it on for the first time. And now that those people are starting to get used to it, there really isn't as big of a push. And realistically, there wouldn't be as many people upgrading to Windows 10 right now. They're just well, people. I mean, there wasn't many people upgrading to it when Redstone 1 happened. Yeah. What, what I mean is that there's still... Yeah, the rush, like you said, isn't as, as great to uh, get features out. They're just trying to do it do it better perhaps we'll see yeah redstone one was at the uh tail end of the uh update or i mean free upgrade period mm -hmm. so i mean i guess i guess some of it yeah but yeah okay i get. i guess uh let's see yeah we're at about half hour or so now it's time to talk about a few different things and uh uh Ver Vernon is up next for this one. Well, I'm ready for a new SOC. The Snapdragon 820 is not dead by any means. There's plenty of new phones running that rather amply, no problem. But Qualcomm has uh, announced that the, the Snap 835, the Snapdragon 835, will offer 27% improved performance, or better, yeah, improved performance, and uh, use 25% less power than the the previous the 820, and that's uh it's a big deal. Of course, that's those are their those are the, that's them that's uh, Qualcomm running those numbers. But uh, you know, from what I recall, the 820 wasn't incredibly a bad chip anyway, and so it is encouraging to see this. And of course, with Qualcomm's you know Windows on ARM that stuff coming down. That's incredible to see that because um, obviously many of these chips are going to go into mobile devices, tons and tons. And then, of course, or I guess one could argue that all of them will. And it just in your regular, like the new Samsung or like whatever, like that, that type of chip or that type of device it's going to go into. But with the with running Windows on ARM, it's going to be really nice to have improved uh or you know, decrease power consumption and improve performance for these mobile computers. I'm excited for this. This is pretty awesome. And they even made the thing smaller, which was yeah. um, you know, you know, yeah. just just to interject here, when I first saw the uh, picture and just see the comparison of that with a penny, just imagine, all right, how big would a processor have to be to have that much power thirty years ago? Oh man, I mean. <laughs> an I mean, eight, even an eight, acre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, even even ten or twenty is it would still be so much larger, and it's like I, I really do appreciate uh, a lot of the smartphone era because we see this rush to make the 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 guts of a machine smaller and smaller, and it's like it is just really cool to see how much power they get to pack in something that's not even as large as a penny, and I'm I'm just. 
infinitely impressed by that. There's so many things that we kind of take for granted, I think, and the size we're able to shrink things down to is one of them. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm <laughs> excited for a couple other things that are rolling out. Uh, Bluetooth 5, which is going to be better, long, you know, less power consumption. You can send more packets of data with Bluetooth 5. And uh, obviously better range included, which is going to be nice to see. Because so many things are going Bluetooth, we have been for quite some time. And also included in the new, in the 835, would be Quick Charge 4.0. And Qualcomm is telling us that you will get five additional hours of usage in just five minutes of charging. That's phenomenal. Like, <laughs> But of course, that's, you know, those are, that's them marketing this product. And yeah. and five hours of what type of usage on what um, you know device? Of course, that's runs you know it's a big range there. But still, if they're, if they're talking about a Windows on ARM device, I would uh, first thing I'd be would be skeptical. But if it was real, I'd be impressed. I yeah. doubt they're talking about that, but uh, they're probably saying your, your standard you know uh, the whatever which standard which Samsung which Samsung uh, Galaxy are we on now? The thirteen? Uh, no, what are we at the? We are at the one that explode. Oh, I'm not allowed to say that anymore, am I? Not the note, just <laughs> the, the that S. One. I mean, yeah, it, it's on the uh, S7 and the S7 Edge. Yeah, oh, and then cool. they also have uh, the Galaxy A line, I believe, which yeah, yeah has three phones. I like there. those little things. As much as I hate Samsung, I don't mind those the their little A devices. Anyway, I'll stop uh, showing my ignorance lately. I have not been keeping up on the Android phones. I'll admit. Anyway, the. One more thing coming with the 835 is that we're going to get uh, Ultra HD, you know, 4K uh, playback at 60 frames per second. For a mobile device, which is most likely not more than 6 inches with a, a display of 6 inches, this is inc- you, you don't need this resolution. I mean, come on, people. But it's incredible well, to have it there. And, of course, for, if this the, is especially. On, I mean, thinking about the fact that this is one of the first ARM processors capable of running full Windows 10. That's that's what I'm getting at, yeah. yeah. On a mobile device, less than 7-inch display, you don't need this resolution. But if you're getting on a much bigger device, not only if you're casting it, think of Continuum, okay, or even just connecting to a larger monitor, which uh, is, is there, think of a much bigger display, a full 4K, obviously, monitor and playing back video at 60 frames per second potentially uh, i guess gaming is going to be improved that way as well i'm sure but i don't really know to what extent um, we think of gaming i don't know how much of that is going to be on a windows running arm but whatever uh not very much i can't imagine it's not yeah we're not expecting that i mean not not for a while i mean somewhere down the road probably something something big will happen but uh early years expect a lot of super nintendo games yeah <laughs> not much else well i will share which is also the current state of mobile gaming <laughs> yeah well i'll reveal my ignorance one more time here in the specs of the uh the snapdragon 835 it shows we're at um well as far as the wi-fi offering uh you know 802 11 AD, and I didn't even know that was a Wi-Fi thing at this point. I knew we had AC, of course. So AD, I'm sure, is better, you know, for a, a, a number or a letter further down the alphabet. But um, I'm excited for this new processor, and I guess I should learn a little bit more about that. Still, still though, I mean, I think it's easy enough to say that this is something that's going to be very, very neat. And I really, 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 again... As I've been saying for the past couple of weeks, I want to see a Windows on ARM device r- running something like this. I mean, just I want to see the potential of these things and seeing something just as small as this with so many features packed in. Again, I get even more hope for this stuff mm-hmm. and I just cannot wait. And uh, as for something that you can't or something you won't have to wait for, rather. Because I'm doing a very smooth segue here. Uh, as of the time that this podcast is out, there will also be an update for the MS Power User app, which this is version 3.1 of the app, and it is a major update with a bunch of new features. And now, first off, the app's backend is getting upgraded, 
It uses a new API and it has a much faster reading experience. You can now start reading an article on your phone and continue it reading and continue that reading on your PC or the other way around, which that is really, really cool. You can also listen to our, our smooth, calming voices from within the app as there is a dedicated podcast section, and you'll also be able to download each episode for offline listening from there as well. And there's, there's also Cortana integration, re, a redesigned welcome screen for a better onboarding experience, re, a new read later feature that allows you to bookmark and save articles to read later, even when you're offline, Choose any accent for the app's theme, completely redesigned settings, support for live tile badges, app, the app box widget in articles has been slightly improved. Oh man, there's, there's a lot of stuff here, but uh, just to finish up the list, clicking on a link to another MSPU article on the app will now open within the app rather than your default web browser. You can configure the background task for the app to save battery life. We've improved the user interface of the app, and there is a new image viewer in articles. Wow. Yeah, this is this is version 3.1, but with that many changes, you'd think it would be a .0. Wow. Shout out to the folks behind that and all the stuff there. You guys are doing a great job, even if you won't hand me all the beta builds. <laughs> well, yeah, this sounds pretty awesome, and I'm excited to use it. Moving on to something else that's pretty awesome. We had, of course, the Surface Studio is pretty stinking awesome. But, um, well, I mean, maybe maybe we should talk about the top of this section. Oh, whoops, this I missed is, one. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. This this is CES 2017 going on an event which I cannot think up a witty joke about the acronym for the it's the of course the Consumer Electronics Show, and it's the thing that every single person I know who has gone there has said it's overrated, but. Looking at the, or rather, going there is overrated. There is some pretty cool stuff shown off at home. <clears throat> Boy, excuse me again. Uh, and uh, I'll let Vernon take this as my throat is ready to murder me. All right. Well, I'll hit a couple things that Dell has introduced. The uh, XPS. The I didn't read too much about this one. I'm feeling it for Andy. Introduces the convertible XPS 13. It's basically the XPS 13, except you can take the display off. And that's a good thing. And um, in the interest of time and uh, Andy's throat, we're going to move forward with another Dell product, which I'm substantially more excited about. Like I mentioned, uh, the Surface Studio was announced a bit ago and is available for people. They're using it. It's stinking awesome. It's expensive, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Well, Dell has something called the Canvas 27. You can imagine it's a 27-inch display or 27 inch something. It's not the 27th version. And it's basically a Surface Studio. No, 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 studio. no. They're, they're, wait a second, no. It's called the 27 because they are they were intending to release it 10 years from now because it's so high tech. <laughs> so they named it for the year, right? Well, sure. they might have had a time traveler or two ha come by, except that's probably what your their marketing team will tell you. Shh. Okay. Well... With the Surface Studio, the display is up, and it's a touch display, of course, and it can tilt down to a 10-degree angle, and, and um, you know, that's what Surface Studio does. And, of course, you have the Surface Dial as part of that. It's touchscreen, and it's awesome. Well, the Dell, Dell's Canvas 27 is basically the, the lower part of it. Think of it as the, the easel or the drafting board mode, and it really only has two different positions. Basically, the five, what is it? Um, let me read here. It's almost completely down. Let's see, a 10, uh, one and a half degree angle, so almost completely flat. And then it can moves up, move up to a 20 degree angle, which is like you know a drafting board. It is not the only thing about this, or I should say it needs other stuff. It needs a PC to run this, and you would be a fool not to have a, another display with it which is what which is how they're showing it here it is a little bit quirky i think it's awesome i love i let me let me share something here like for so long microsoft has been trying to get oems to make interesting fun pcs things that were different and truly um you know s s advancing the the hardware and the 
just the overall concept of what a PC was. And it's been pretty pathetic for a while it, until I would say, I don't know, what's it been? A year and a half ago. I mean, once the Surface came out, of course, the Surface RT and the Surface Pro started the ball rolling with that. And OEMs are really starting to pick up speed. Windows 10, I mean, you have um, you have Windows Hello and you have different different things that are they're enticing OEMs to make different differentiating products. And I love it. I absolutely love it. The Canvas 27 by Dell is one of those things, but it does, it's still an accessory. Like it's basically an accessory with accessories with it. <laughs> so it has, it's, it's this, think of it as this enormous keyboard, which you can see, you know, it just has a display in it. And then you could put these different dials on them, except they don't call them dials. They call them totems. So it's similar to surface dial and there's, other little things that go with that. There's a bunch of ports on the side too. That's a good thing to connect stuff. I mean, yay for that. And it's going to be uh, two thirds the price of the Surface Studio. But of course, it's only a portion of a full PC. So $2,000 is what this Canvas 27 is going to cost. It should be available, what well, says uh, the 30th of March, um, which is coming up here pretty quick. So what obviously Dell was in cahoots with Microsoft long ago. They are anyway. They're, they work very closely together. And they, there's no way that Dell could have put this together starting just a few months uh, before the Surface Studio was announced. Microsoft has work, been working with Dell for quite some time to have something like this. Or it just happened. <laughs> they just, uh, interesting coincidence, they were both thinking the same thing. So I love the direction this is going. I'm glad that Dell came out with something like this so quickly. Love that it's cheaper. It's a little bit, it's not just a copy. It is a, it leans a different direction and slightly and I'm excited for it. Not going to buy one though. <laughs> you know, that's the, the sad part about this is that I tweet, I'm not allowed to burst out at laughter. I don't think. And then, and then you say something worth laughing at, but. Yeah. Now it's time for something for me to cover because I don't think my throat is ready to go on a crazy murder spree. Dell has unveiled a concept design for a gaming laptop with not one, not two, but three built-in 4K displays. This is this is something pretty crazy, folks. It is it's just Okay, so take a laptop, all right? You're go and for some crazy reason, you want a gaming laptop, all right? So that, that raises the price significantly there. Also gives you a lot of hardware that you would be better off just buying a tower PC and then maybe remotely connecting to that. But regardless of my thoughts on gaming laptops, there's three screens in total that flip out, creating a multi-monitor experience on a laptop. This is something that is... It is a, it does seem to be a concept design, and, I, and this, I, this is a case where it's I'm fully expecting it to be like most concept cars and never, ever, ever happen at all. But, I don't know. Uh, There's a lot of people that commute, as have a long commute on a train, and with people's growing and strong addiction to gaming, PC gaming, which has a comeback, I'm told, uh... Who, people could not survive without this, Andy. There are those people out there <laughs> who need, who who in their heart feel compelled to have a laptop in which has three large and incredibly high resolution monitors to game when really they should, you know, just be staring at a, you know, reading a newspaper or, you know, looking sideways at the person uh, across from them on the on the subway. Well, I've got to ask the Microsoft question here, or maybe maybe this was the Microsoft of a few years ago, but uh, how's lapability? <laughs> <laughs> hey, may, maybe it comes with a stand. Maybe it just pops out, uh, and then it's, <laughs> let me see. No, it doesn't seem to say that it comes with a stand. No. Well, I think it, I think there will be some Chinese third-party OEM that's going to add a stand, full stand for this. 
and probably also a chair that pops out from it. So really, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it will be a desktop. I can't believe it. Including Ra- the Razor, desk. Razor is going to br- Razor is going to bring around the Jetsons. <laughs> Even better would just be to suspend it from the ceiling. That would be better. I mean, why not? Just have a little hooks, you so, know, lanyards so that pull out Spider, retractable Spider-Man lanyards. Laptop. Pull out, hook to, you know, well, really, no, we, just we the gotta rings go, hanging have to, from the top of the subway the car. That would make more sense. This is, this is the Spider-Man laptop. This is the highest I, amount of innovation I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I need to stop contributing to this sor- story. You can finish it up and then... No, yeah. That, I, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is called Project Valerie. comes with three 17.3-inch 4K EXO displays equipped with NVIDIA G-Sync and expensive... one er, Expansive. I bet yeah, it's expensive, I, too. Yeah, that, too. 180-degree <laughs> NVIDIA surround view gaming. Each display mechanically slides out of the side of the main screen and adjusts into place, making it easy for users to deploy. With integrated multi-monitor support, you no longer have to deal with external monitors for immersive gaming. All right, let me interject here. Sometimes when people need to uh, share a signal in space, you know, bounce it around the Earth, they will send a satellite up there. They will deploy a satellite. It feels like this laptop is getting... It used the term deploy. I should not need to deploy my PC, okay? I, I don't know what I'm missing. And it should not need <laughs> be deployed. I mean, I don't, was there a launch schedule on this? I mean, how did they count down the timing to this? We need to clear, you know, air air uh, airspace well, nearby. I mean, if you're, if you're going to use this, this is... on a subway, you're going to need to, you're going to, need to clear some yeah, space. Yeah, it probably is going to take a permit to use this thing. <sighs> just... and, okay, I, I swear I'm done. I, I probably am too, but yeah, this they say that this weighs less than twelve pounds at least. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I'm not sure how much the average laptop weighs, but uh, it's not that good. Yeah. Good gravy. It's not that. <laughs> yeah, I think most uh, 4K TVs weigh less. I don't know what I'm. Okay, all right. Never mind. Yeah, this is this though. This is. Again, it's a concept device, but just because it's a concept doesn't mean it's free from uh, being able to be laughed at. And uh, we took full opportunity of that. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah just, I just want to say, though, that I hope for maximum craziness that this thing does actually become real. But uh, looking at the design, I see one, two, three, four, five different ways it could break very easily. <laughs> Not including pure, uh, pure rage incited, uh, it, or you know, by it, having it, it thing, on the thing about <laughs> having it on the, the thing subway. about you know getting mad about a game on your computer is that you is let like you slam the keyboard tray in and the, on your desk and the keyboard tray breaks. With, the, with your con, with gaming on consoles, you angrily slam the controller down and either the shot the shoddy table that you bought at a flea market breaks or your controller does, whichever one does first. With this, and with other gaming laptops, you get mad, and well, you're you're down a thousand, two thousand dollars. <laughs> I was talking to other people on the subway, but anyway, they're them getting upset. I gotta move on here. Lenovo, we like N- Lenovo. They reveal a Windows holographic headset already, and and it it uh, the New York event in <laughs> New York. Um, they, when uh, Microsoft did talk about, they announced a few different, um, OEMs that will be making these things. Lenovo has al- already revealed theirs at CES and it's, it's cool. It's, pr- it's pretty good. It is tethered. Okay. So that's, that makes a big, big difference, but it's light, uh, 350 grams. I don't, I'm not going to try to do the conversion and, uh, it's, it's a higher resolution um, for than Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, which are about twice the price. Uh, it's got it has two different uh, cameras, which would be used for augmented reality, or I guess, yeah, basically even if it was virtual, how do I say this? Like it's definitely VR. Like it has the display, the monitor screens on them. You can't see through them, but it can be augmented because of the cameras. It just that's that's clear. And um, 
There's no motion controls with it, but it is, it's compatible with other, the Windows holographic peripherals and it works with, I mean, basically works with some of the HoloLens software and Windows holographic stuff. Price is only three to $400. Uh, That's impressive. Man, I mean, like, just look at what things were a few years ago. I mean, it used to be... Well, I mean, I'm, a year, not even a year ago. Yeah, man. It, it's, this year, even. This well, year, it's going to... It will likely... Yeah. yeah, well, 2017 even, as it's still rolled over, it'll run you maybe 800 bucks for an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And this is the first and, one. Just wait to see... Yeah. This is... This is Lenovo's first headset, I think, and they're going to yeah, get better I, I'm at this. Sure it is, all the other, all the other many. OEMs that are announced, I mean, they're going to ASUS and whatever. There's plenty. It's just going to get better and better. And Microsoft is going to kick some butt in this area. We really thought that. Oh, mixed, for sure. I really thought that Hololens with mixed reality that was the future. Obviously, I think it's the the better version of the future using that. And that VR would just kind of drop off, or Microsoft wouldn't dig into that. Microsoft is is adding V. You know, they announced they're doing the VR thing as well. Even, um, yeah, whatever. I'm just happy for it. This is yeah. cool, and, and we're also, starting to run out of time. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but also to just go over some things real quick, and also talk about Lenovo. They recently announced, or rather, just today announced. No, two days. Well, they announced the the mix. 720, and it's their latest take on the Surface Pro. As the, as you'd expect from that description, it is a two-in-one device that has, honestly, all you really expect for this type of product anymore. You have a detachable keyboard, you have a kickstand, you have the fo a focus on cr the creative market, which Microsoft is really aiming at right now. And it definitely does not look as good as a Surface. And but the start the apparently it starts at nine thousand or I mean nine hundred not de certainly not nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, also known as just one penny below a thousand dollars for the uh, starter model. And it looks like a nice little device, I guess. But uh, I will forever prefer Surface design. Then final story, I guess. Yeah, that seems to be it. Samsung announces a uh, new note notebook Odyssey gaming laptops with Beast Mode at CES. Yeah, these are arriving in February, and or okay, 15-inch model arriving in February, and a 17-inch model arriving in April. And these are are. Laptops with red backlit keyboards, or red backlit keyboards for uh, 15 inch, and multicolor backlights for the 17 inch, which also includes a beast mode bu button above the keyboard that places the device in maximum performance mode through its Odyssey control software suite. Now, immediately I think of that as a gimmick. Not saying that yeah. it, it isn't good, but that just screams gimmick at me. It just se screams like. Like it's not worth it. It screams like it, it. It is somehow automatically. I think that they're going to charge more than it's actually worth. I think. That well, that's all gaming laptops. Yeah. yeah this is. I, I don't think you've. I don't, I'm sure true. you haven't looked at this market much. But, no, uh, I haven't. Well, if you do, be prepared for a laugh at some of the laptop designs. Yeah, I will say I that these are not particularly bad, like some of them are. Although there is this dumb design around the trackpad that just looks out of place. Yeah, they start at over. Okay, the 15 inch one starts at one point two thousand dollars, while the 17 inch price has not been announced yet. Hmm. Yeah, the, the it might as well just laptop, have a great I big mean, red turbo button on it or nitrous. Well, that's basically what something. it is. Yeah, that's basically what it is, and I'm assuming it just uh, disables certain background processes to get the thing running better. And yeah, yeah, I will say I'm not. Bi I guess I've probably made it a bit too obvious, but I am not a fan of the uh, gaming laptop market. Oh, it, it is I love the market. It's hilarious. Like, <laughs> I, sorry, continue. No, no, no. Yeah, but it's it's just paying too much for too little, in my opinion. I would much rather have a desktop tower. I mean, for the price, for the parts, I'm sure I could get a thousand times better experience 
by just building my own PC completely from scratch with the with that same price I could get so much better parts and I mean heck if I wanted to play it remotely I mean I'm there's there's so many ways that I could just remotely connect to my computer either through Microsoft's own remote desktop or through a service like I don't know Team Viewer or something you might not get the best online gaming performance but for but just there's just so much that I uh, think could be done better there but yeah all right, let's finish. Okay. Let's finish up, Andy. Let's, let's yeah. Why don't you give us our not to end, not to end the show on a low note. I mean, depending on your view of gaming laptops, that will yeah. Run send you your hate mail to money. me. I d- I deserve it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so you can send hate mail to Vernon, but you can send your app of the week. As we're now starting off the year, we're back to those. Send your app of the week to me. I'm Andrew at mspoweruser dot com, and this week's app of the week is Collecto. An, an app that actually got its own article on the site. And this is an app that's uh, for building up your collections of anything, really. You get to create your own lists and what, well, not, yeah, you get to start building your collections of things. Like, for example, you'll say, all right, I want to start making a collection of movies, create a folder named movies, and then start putting in the movies you've watched there if you want. Or you could start putting in the games you've completed, et cetera, et cetera. And this is an, an app that, excuse me, isn't quite new. It's been around since the Windows Phone 8 era, I'm told. And it's made by David... Oh, boy. I really do hope I pronounce your last name correctly, if you're listening. David Cthu. K- I really hope K- I said that maybe right. Maybe Cthu. Cthu, maybe. I don't know. Uh, a principal program manager for the Windows and Devices group. And it really shows. As I start this thing up, I start seeing all these nice little animations, calling things out, nice little tutorials, showing me how to handle things, and just, it's a very polished app, and it's easily one of the best third-party Windows 10 apps I have ever seen. It makes it makes sure you know how to use it, it contains all these nice little touches that make it nice to use, and it just feels good to use. And also, of course, when it comes to functionality, this is something that I myself will be using quite a bit because I have, I previously, I sign up for all sorts of uh, sites to manage the stuff I'm watching or playing. Like, for example, I used to use Backlogery for a while, but being able to have every single thing in one app on my, uh, either my PC or my phone, that's nice. Yeah, so I... Again, you know, if you have any apps of the week you want to send in, feel free to send them to, to uh, Andrew at MSPowerUser.com. Now I will let Vernon do the outro. Gaming laptop uh, hate mail to Vernon at MSPowerUser.com. You can follow us on Twitter, MSPowerUser, and of course you can follow us individually on Twitter. I'm Vernon E.L. and he is FusionFan45. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, folks, if you don't already. Hey, you can even review us and all that. That's like a thing, folks, so do that. We better finish up. I had a great time this week, Andy. Oh, for this sure. Was this pretty this cool. was a fun one. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone, and this is not uh, country or uh, continent specific because everyone's in the New Year, and, uh, whether <laughs> whether you, you uh, celebrate it or not. Well, I mean, te- if we're going to get technical, there's still some countries that uh, have their own calendars, so... Uh, Dang it. Yeah, I think... We're, okay, <laughs> sure. Ex- excluding them. N- no offense intended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. Have a great week, everyone.